Hi everybody, this is Dan Fredrickson, creator of The Hyperbaric Lifestyle and author of the book Bohica, Stories of Navy Divers. Today, we're going to talk about men have periods. Yes, I know, every woman in the house probably cringed right now, but men do have periods. My daughter used to call it manstration, and she thought that was real funny, but it's true. Men have periods just like women. The only issue is it's obviously not as extreme. And the reason I found this out was I had an experience in my life that made me go on a deep discovery mission. What this was, I went on and ran in a what is called a 10K or 6.6 .6 mile race. I did a lot of running in my earlier days and this was in my early 20s, I was about 23 or 24. And I was teaching Navy dive school at that time. So I had plenty of time to work out and do a lot of stuff then because that's what we were doing. We were either running classes or going to work out and keeping in shape ourselves. So what I ended up doing is I was running this 10K and I discovered that I ran just terrible. I don't know why my time was a lot slower and I couldn't figure it out. I went through my serious checklist that I always have because I did all my, any of my athletic stuff, I kept records and logs for because I was really wanting to improve and be the best I could possibly be. So I kept track of everything. So what it is, I looked at it and I said, yeah, you know, I slept good. I stretched good in the morning. I ate, I did all the normal things I normally do. I didn't have any problem with equipment. I didn't have any injuries. I just could not figure out why I wasn't running as fast during this couple of days, or especially this one day. And all during the week, my practice times were a lot faster. I went on a complete life mission there. I decided I am going to find out why I can't be 100% all the time. This went on and on and on for quite some time. I went for about three months there and I documented everything in my day. It was pretty crazy. I was teaching Navy dive school and during this period of time, I didn't have any of the head instructor class things I was assisting. So I had time to kind of do a lot of different things. And what I did, I kept track of everything, my running, my exercise, what I ate, what I drank, how I felt, how the people around me felt, how all of this affected me. I got really, really into it. And after three months, I kept trying to figure it out nothing came out, nothing at all. I said, God, I still have my slow periods. I still have my fast times. And I didn't look at days or spacing between it. It just was kind of strange one time that all of a sudden my wife was on her monthly period. And I just noticed that when she was doing that, I looked at my records and I went, hmm, seems to coordinate exactly with her. And I just remember as later on, when I had my daughters and all their friends, anytime they all were on their periods or anything like that, they all seemed to kind of do it at the same time. It was like a chemical thing. And I'd have seven or eight or nine teenage girls all on their period. Now that was fun. <laughs> so, but earlier in my life, it dawned on me, boom. I looked at my records because my wife said to me, well, maybe you're having a period. And she thought that was funny, you know? <laughs> so. I went ahead and I checked my records and I kind of looked at the timing of that and the timing with this. And lo and behold, my great discovery. Anytime she started on her period, I started on my slow times. And it seemed to, poof, what a wonderful thing came out. I said, well, during those weeks, I completely changed my training. Because I found out that when I trained during that time hard, it wore me down more because my body was already going through some weird changes. And the funny part was, is that my wife then made a few comments about it that I thought were very amusing. So she was saying, now what are gonna men gonna do? They're gonna try to steal our periods? Well, maybe if that's the case, if you wanna steal it, maybe you should feel it like us. And her proposition was, 
every time that she started feeling cramps or a back pain or anything like that, she decided, how about I just kick you in the nuts and you can feel my pain with me. I thought about that for about one second and said, nah, not gonna do it. But it did open my eyes up to all the things that were going on. Of course, then I tried to do humor and that didn't work out too terribly well because I looked at her and I said, well, I might not be having a manly man's menstruation period. It's probably because when you're on your period, you're on my back all the time. Needless to say, that didn't go over all that well. And she started talking about me feeling her pain again and swinging a bolo, bolo punch at me like that, going, come on over here and feel my pain. <laughs> but I decided that, no, nah, I don't think that was a great idea. And humor was not a great way to get out of this. So I immediately decided to go away and cook her some good food and came back and massaged her. And then she said to me, because if you were a real man, you'd want to share this with me. And I went, oh. I think her idea of what a real man was and mine were completely different. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, I discovered that I changed my training habits. And what was pretty neat then is because I also coached track at that time. And I had a youth track team, both my daughters later on, this was later on. I had both of my daughters were on my track team and I had about 40 to 50, depending on kids anywhere from 18 and below that were running track with me. And what was kind of neat is that I was able to pass these kind of informations on to both the men and mostly the girls because they were all going through puberty and going through different stuff at that time. And it was tough for them to figure out their bodies and it, it really upset them that things like this were going on. By me explaining this to them in a way that wasn't embarrassing and it wasn't anything that anybody else didn't have, it made it easy for us to adjust their training and anything else that went on in their lives because they knew that this was coming and it was something you planned for rather than something you reacted to. And that made the whole thing so much easier. So the girls didn't have to be embarrassed to come up and say, I'm not feeling good today. They would just kind of tell me, I need the other training section. And that way I knew I was gonna go put them over and, and doing exercises and different easier stuff during that time because they didn't perform as well and it was a tougher for them to do at that time. And it was so much better because then their training worked out much, much cleaner, clearer, and they were happy. So I like that part of it because everybody knew how their body was gonna be and they worked at that plan. And it's just like a health plan, just like anything else. If you understand where you're going and what you're doing, life is a lot easier to tolerate when it comes to change. Because then when you have your plan and things change, like your monthly period or an injury or something like that, any kind of emotional happen, you know you could come back to this path and it's gonna be stable and ready for you. So by planning your cycle and your period or whatever you want to call this, you will have an idea of what's gonna to happen to you. There's not gonna be a dark path in front of you. You're gonna have a nice open yellow brick road and you know where you're going and it makes it much easier to travel. So when that road changes a little bit here and there, you're able to shift and move just the way you know where you're gonna be. And I like the fact that you plan ahead for the best but you're always prepared for the worst. And by doing that, your life is much more stable. You have less fear of anything coming up. And in fact, you could probably eliminate a lot of it because of the fact you have a good plan and you have a good stable setup behind you because you've already done that and you know what you're doing. So once you start going down that path and you see your body's direction, you'll be able to change a lot of the things in it. I had a 13 year old boy that came into my track team and he was having a lot of problems on until I explained this whole situation to him and he flat told me I thought I was going crazy sometimes he says but now when I see what's happening to my body and the way things are going with this new information it opened up everything now and I can plan on it and now it works great for me I did this in our workouts because I ran all the track team with them when I was coaching track I did it for about 13 years, I think. And I had opened my own track club and all that. And uh, what was nice about the fact is that I ran all the track 
practices with them. I did all the exercises with them so they could never say that I made them work harder and made them work more than I would expect anyone else. And what was neat is then I ran on the track with all of them or did all this field events with them and showed them how to do it. And that way I would be able to personally coach each one of them and talk to them about their life cycle and give them a personalized information tour around the track. They worked on their bodies, they worked on everything. It was so nice because I could personally get with each person for a couple of minutes on each one of the practices and I could set a new goal or a strategy for each one of them. And part of that was nutrition, also exercise, sleep, water, all my things in my hyperbaric lifestyle that I'm pushing now from a long time ago I brought, I was starting then. This has been a plan for many, many, many years. And that was one of my starts is when I coached my youth because I tried to follow that plan for myself and it was so nice to pass it on to them. And your body function and cycles was whole part of just the whole plan again, because that's just one of the little notches on the thing that you have to deal with every month. You have to deal with your period, your monthly health, everything you're gonna be doing in your life all has to move into a package and a plan. And young people like this didn't understand their bodies. And when they had an idea and a cycle system, they knew how to plan in that circle. And that circle kept coming around to them again. And they said, yeah, it keeps coming again. And by working in this system of cycles, they knew what was always coming to them and they knew what was always behind them. And they knew what was gonna happen. And it made life a lot more tolerable and something you could always expect to happen. And there were, there were much less surprises. That was the key. You can plan on something and hope for that was gonna be. So by, track, by training with my track group there, it made me follow all the recommendations. And what was fun on the track meets, because I ran in all the track meets too, is every time I would get out on the track, I had between 30 and 50 personal coaches telling me if I was doing well, or especially if I was not following my own rules and, and recommendations when I was running. And it also motivated me too to kind of consistently be looking and improving myself so I could set the example for my kids. If I slacked it all, believe me, they were eagle-eyed on me. If I was doing poor technique, I could hear the chorus in harmony telling me. So it was a great motivator for me and they were able to pass on all this wonderful information because they saw that it worked. They saw it worked for me as an older person and they saw it was working for them and their friends. And that was a great way to set your path and your life because then you could see that path and you could see your dream and you see a direction to it. And that was so much fun to see that in young kids, to give them an idea, to take mystery out of life make them look to the future in a happy, healthy, wonderful way. I had so much fun coaching. I love to coach. I still do coaching. I do it now with this. This is coaching people for health. I like coaching physical because I play handball a lot and I like to coach my kids that way. Passing on your information, your positive information is another wonderful thing to do in life. And I thoroughly enjoy that. And I plan on doing it until I can't anymore. I think one of the coolest thing about coaching was the fact that I learned so many new things from my kids. Because I challenged them to always go out and look for information and look for new ideas. So invariably, every practice, one of them would come up and say, did you know this or have you heard about that? And that kept me on the ball too. And I enjoyed that because it did two things. It kept my mind open to always learning new things and it kept them looking constantly for new and different things because they were always trying to one-up me or any of their friends, which was a friendly, good competition for positive results. It was so cool because now I felt like I motivated them to want to go out and learn more because they wanted to, not because they had to. And it was a lot of fun because sometimes they would come up and they would ask me a certain thing. Do you know this? I said, oh yeah, I heard about that a long time ago. And they'd look at me and go, this study said it was just last week. I go, oh, well, you know, Sometimes I don't tell the truth. 
but I have a fun with them like that a lot because I'd always challenge them. I'd ask them a stupid question and they'd go, that's not true. I said, good, you're thinking, you know? I said, don't believe everything everybody tells you. Find out for yourself. Look between the lines, look for your health, look for everything like that. Always count on yourself to be the expert. If you can't do it, go back, look it up yourself, make sure that you know what's going on because you're gonna hear a lot of information, you're gonna get a lot of stuff from different people all the time. As Napoleon Hill used to say in all of his books, you become the expert, look between the lines of everybody's information and find out what their motivations are. Because generally what it says in the statement, not necessarily true, it's the motivations of somebody trying to get you to do something for them. It's a big deal and it always made me look between the lines and always challenge or not trust information until I saw it from many different sides and angles because every statement has a motivation. And by that motivating statement, you can find out whether the direction is for truth or direction is for deception. And I try to challenge my kids and everybody that comes involved with any of this kind of information, don't believe me all the time, <laughs> but at least some of the time, but go look out for yourself and see if what I'm saying is true and see what other people are saying is true because that's the only way you'll know it's true. So I really wanna thank you for hanging out here and talking with me today. It's been a lot of fun. This is Dan Fredrickson, and I wanna remind you that the only change that you can control in your life is the change you do in yourself.